Hello friends, this is a mesmerizing experience here. We have uh, about 300 curves. I rendered them using depth of field. Uh, with some grain, I'm using the graphics card in order to get a speedy rendering here, so I just don't care about too much noise. What you should keep in mind is what the curves do. The curves are not only as a whole moving up and down and sideways, but they also change their shape internally. That means certain parts of the curves are bent stronger than others over time. And it's a statistical process because I applied a force field here. The reason why there are so many here is because I used MASH, M-A-S-H, the MASH network. Actually, I animated only a single curve here. Well, let me show you the problem and one way to solve it. Let's go to Curves and Surfaces and create a curve. And uh, I'm in the perspective view and I show you a way to actually when I create that curve now with three clicks, for example, it lies flat on the ground and I would have to modify it in order to get it kind of stick out a little bit in, in space here. This is very simple really, but uh, I, I always do it like this. So I start with the curve tool somewhere here. So the point sits here and then I go to one of the orthogonal windows, for example, the front window. And let me see where the point is right here. This is the point I set here in the perspective view. And now in the front Z window, I place the second point here. And then this is the first, where's the first one? This is the first one and this is the second one in the side window and I just um, place it here. And then I go to the top window and I place it here and press enter. So that's the curve I get now. Uh, with uh, Alt B, I get the different background color here. So this is a curve in space. Well, it was a curve in space in the first place, but lying flat on the ground. Okay, when I want to um, animate certain parts of that curve, I need to go to the components, right mouse click and uh, control vertices. And uh, this uh, curve has well, how many? About eight or so. When I move this one up and down, the shape of the curve changes. And I actually can animate that control vertex. That's a CV is the abbreviation for this. I can animate it in space, like it goes up and down and it wobbles around. But I have to do it manually with keyframes or with an expression. But uh, I cannot use a dynamic force here uh, in order to make it well rotate for, or whatever. There are several ways to to go about it, to solve that problem. And uh, basically you need to help this CV and the others you might want to animate into the space of the object nodes. And currently you only see here in the outline a curve, but not that CV. It's a part of this, it's a component and components cannot be animated with force fields. So there are several ways to go about it. And one way is this. I go to animation and to an almost ancient tool. It has been in Maya since version 1.0. And I know the guys who developed Maya in the first place, so in the beta version long ago. It's called Cluster and you find it under Deform. Here it is. Bend shape cluster delta mesh, a mush and a tension, etc. Lattice, you could use several of these, but I'm using the cluster now. The cluster produces a small C, the letter C in the scene, and it appears here. This is the, this is uh, the main reason I introduced that cluster, because I'm, now I'm doing the same thing here with that component, but now it's an object. Um, let me do this with another CV here again. So right mouse click control vertex and for example I can, well let me select this one here. Well actually the two ones at the at the end of that curve. Does that make sense? Yes it does. So I create under animation deform another cluster and this cluster now moves two CVs here 
and uh, I could actually rotate it, etc., which I couldn't do with components. So I have two clusters now, and they are objects in the object world. However, I cannot use a force field on them because they are not geometry. They are just abstract nodes, but at least they are nodes. Go to polygon modeling. Very simple structure is this box here. It's uh, geometrically simple. That means uh, it's uh, one of the most simple objects in Maya, really, and you can it is a renderable object, although we won't need to render it. I want to apply a force field to this object and another one for the other cluster. I need to kind of attach this box to the C. How do I do this? Well, it's called a point constraint. I've selected the, uh, the, the cube here and then with a shift key, I select the cluster. And now I go to constraint and I create a point constraint and you see the cluster goes to the box so the box is the headmaster here and that's exactly what I need if you had selected them the other way around the box would have jumped to the C and, uh, but we want this to be high in the hierarchy uh, because we're gonna add a turbulence or radial field to it now I uh, duplicate that box and wherever I move it doesn't matter really and now I shift select that cluster handle actually I don't want to select the curve just the cube and then the cluster handle number two that's the second one I introduced here and now I do the same thing constrain and point so um, when I move the box now the cluster moves with it and the component moves with it. And we're gonna apply a force field now. We go to FX and fields and solvers and for example a radial field to both boxes here, both cubes. Let's extend the frame range a little bit or quite a bit, 1000. So the field moves the, uh, the cubes away from from the original position and with them the clusters have to move and with the clusters the CVs have to move that's the that's the thought behind it in order to get this a little bit more organized here I can pick the for example the, the second cube here and apply another field here a radial field which basically shoots the object out even further but I changed the magnitude to minus 18 just some kind of value and you see how it wants to go back to the center whereas the other one doesn't so what I'll do with the other one I apply a radial field as well minus 1 so they keep closer to the very center if you want to render the curves you need to select the curve and go down to the Arnold settings the Arnold section is right here just closed and open and just click on render curve of course you need a light so for example a sky dome light and uh, I don't want to see it white in the scene I just want to have a black background this is this visibility camera setting here between 1 and 0 it affects the background rendering um, and now I render that curve and uh, the curve is so thin that you barely see it uh, but you see the the boxes here the cubes and of course I can hide them they're just my helpers here in this context so let me get closer to that curve now by the way when you pr uh, select it and press the key 3 it looks rounder actually it looks the way Arnold is going to render it here is the curve and uh, we need it I think thicker so the curve width here 0 0.09 for example so it doesn't doesn't change here because it's infinitely thin but now you can see it rendered and uh, in order to get many of them uh, you just um, select them and create a mesh network under FX is mesh 
and create mesh network you need your need the option box here because you need to select the instancer the default settings are mesh it needs a mesh and the curve is no mesh um, but the instancer can be used here you have a distribution type uh, which you can change later which I actually will change later I apply this and now I have 10 of them and they behave totally static and the reason for this is because uh, the original curve was hidden during that mash process when I unhide it you see that the other curves do follow of course you can change the force fields later on when you go to the mash node you can apply a signal node here signal add signal node which makes them the whole curves signal around like this up and down left and right lots of um, settings are possible here the noise scale much faster and much slower so this affects the whole curve and uh, if you think you don't have enough of them go to the distribute node uh, try a grid distribution here in order to appreciate that distribution let's go to the beginning here you see here more or less a grid uh, grid Y goes up like this and grid Z goes into the Z direction and I think this is pretty crazy and uh, look at this uh, my, on my pretty old machine here it animates in real time well, with this, I leave you alone. Just keep in mind the components cannot be used in connection with force fields. So you need an intermediate object, which is the cluster or a lattice a deformer. Actually, it does not deform. It just helps us deform. And then you point constrain the, it to the cube or a simple geometry, which you later can hide, which is affected by the force field. Bye-bye.